Hi, I'm Eli. Hi, I'm Brian. Welcome to Game Rentals. This is Resident Evil. We're playing something old, but new. New, but old? Exactly. So this is uh, based off of the GameCube remake of the original PS1 horror classic Resident Evil. It's a lot of layer of port. It's a lot of layers of port. Holy shit. But I have, a, I have an interesting history with this game. So I never actually played the original on the PS1. <laughs> it's so this... a walk metaphor. It's a walking metaphor. Mm. So this is how you choose your difficulty. And you're right into it. All right. You got to pick a character. But this is the first version of this game I played. I never played the, I never played the classic one. But I got a story for this. Chris Redfield. Or, or motherfucking Chris Redfield? Yeah, oh yeah, you get the different costumes. You can choose from Classic Chris or Chris the Boulder Puncher Redfield. Oh my god. And then you get to choose between um, original model Jill versus slightly updated model Jill. Is there any difference between them? Yeah, slight differences. Little uh, little item. They have uh, item tweaks here and there because they both kind of have a passive item. Yeah. They just carry them. It doesn't take up any inventory space. Um. That and... Oh yeah, and Chris doesn't start with a gun. Is it because he punches so strong? No, see, he actually... You remember that one episode of Spongebob Squarepants with the anchor arms? Yeah. That's basically it. There's just noodles underneath there. They do nothing. Oh. I think he does have slightly more health. She starts with a gun, right? She does start with a gun. <coughs> Jill Valentine. Be my Valentine. Jill, Jill, is, content. Jill is one of those, like, old-timey, like, video game crushes, you know? Yeah. July 1998, Raccoon Forest. Yep, we're going into a mansion. Get to meet all the iconic classic characters that we know and love. Because we've... Your history with Resident Evil is kind of awkward. You played a lot of the newer ones. Yes. You played 4, 5, and 6. Yes. In fact, you played 5 and 6 with me. Yes. A lot of it. You played a lot of 5 with me. A lot of it. We got lots of fucking... We got some stories for that, I'm sure. Because that was a good time. Resident Evil 5, I'll stand by, is a perfectly serviceable and fun game. It's a horrible horror game. Bravo team, no. Bravo team was just simply not made... Uh, they were not made, meant for this world. There's lots of little things to be aware of in this game, though. There's multiple endings, for one. Naturally. Naturally. Is this Capcom again? Yes. We are... Capcom fanboys, yes. Can they give us something? I'd take a t-shirt. <laughs> Uh, do we have to, like, email them about it, maybe? Probably. What's old model doing here? You think that, this is all pre-rendered. You think you can pre-render a costume? I think they should fucking re-render it. And just have two cutscenes. The costume placed over, because that would be the decent thing to fucking do. Could you picture the fucking new Chris model in this cutscene, though? Imagine how silly he'd look. <laughs> I mean, kinda. Also, I can be very helpful in one one little bit of information. Yeah. This isn't this is pre Resident Resident Evil Four, so there are no quick time events. Really? Yeah. Huh. You know, I kind of thought there wouldn't be, but I just never really thought about a, it a game anymore without some sort of quick time event. Yeah, I know they're so common and. Shitty. I don't mind them, I guess, but... No, oh, they're this is important. Enter, Enter the survival, survival horror. horror. Resident Evil 1 is the game that coined that phrase. Huh. The term, the genre survival horror would not exist without Resident Evil. At least not by that name. Other games have done it before, or has done it since, even better, but... Not quite your ordinary house, that's for sure. Also, you get to play as Jill, so you get to interact with my favorite character. I do. Yeah, Barry. Who, who the fuck is that? Oh, that's Wesker. What was that? Oh, look at him. There he is in his fucking beautiful red vest. It's Barry, the motherfucking legend, Burton. That's Wesker. Yeah. <coughs> Back before he was like a Earl Burroughs demon. Oh. And he was just a dude. That's an interesting thing with Resident Evil is that they did a really... It's a staple in the series now to have that like door opening transition screen. But originally, it was just used as something to mask the loading screens. And it's actually pretty clever when you think about it. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. Also, Ink increments. Ink ribbons are saves? Yes. Only at typewriters. 
I get a limited number of... Oh, what? Yes, you have a limited number of saves. It's an old-timey typewriter! You can save your progress! Use the ink ribbon! I should probably do that once. Yeah, yeah, I recommend it at least early. Um, the difficulty would also affect how many ink ribbons you'd get throughout the campaign. I.e., every time you pick up an ink ribbon on the hardest difficulty, you get one ink ribbon only. So, there's like, every save room will probably have an ink ribbon drop in it, usually. Oh, that's awkward. What the fuck? What? Who ain't? What? A Resident Evil character. So you can move around, you can probably feel like the difference that it's absolutely not tank controls. Oh yeah, no, the movement's definitely not tank controls, but the aim is a bit fucky. Yeah, I mean, that's classic Resident Evil aim. I think you'd better take a look at this. What is it? Man, the only thing that I don't like about this game is that... God, I wish there was an option to keep the original voice acting from the PS1 version. Yeah? It's so fucking bad. Oh. And you get, like, some... You miss it on some gold lines, like... Jill Sandwich. <laughs> and it's blood. What is that? It's blood. Chris's blood. It might be Chris's blood. And then he's like fucking tasting it, and I'm like, guy, guy, what are you fucking doing, Barry? Is that why you liked him? No, I liked him because his fucking magnum is like, you know. How do like, I shoot? I believe it's going to be your action button. What the f so, I like. Do, and I don't recommend. Yeah. I don't want to test it. I don't want to waste a bullet. Well, I mean, am I a good person or am I going to fuck with you as much as I can while we're doing this? I'll figure it out. Shut the fuck up. Get out of here. Get out of here. Well, I'll give, you your, I'll give you your early freebies because this is shit that you might not know about. All right. When you see your first Zambambarino, run the fuck away. Oh. Locked from the other side. Yeah, get used to that. Locked doors and fucking keys with arbitrary symbols on it. An emblem is carved into the jaw. An armor emblem. That's important. I just love that you just kind of left Barry there. It's like... <laughs> oh, was I supposed to fucking talk to him? Oh, no, no, no. No, you're doing the right thing. You're exploring the right area. It's just that I always found it funny that, like, he's just there's like, okay, you go on ahead and explore. I'm going to go look at this blood. It's like, do you have, like, a PhD or something? Can you just, like, fucking identify blood and remains just by touching it? And he's like... For long enough. He just absorbs it and just gains its knowledge. Some kind of, like, parasite. I mean, that's pretty sick. Oh. That's where he came from. I figured, after it was unlocked. Mm. I was like, oh, that's strange. Yeah, I'm like, oh, there's no way that's right. Yeah, so there's like, there's all kinds of little secrets and shit. Bury. Bury. Every time I see him do that, I'm just thinking like he's just going to grab the blood and just, he just put it in his mouth. Mm. Bury, you're fucking creeping me out, bud. I mean, he, it's, uh, he, it's, he exudes an energy, you know? Is this a door over here? Uh, no, just decoration. Like, uh, uh stained glass windows. There was another hall direction in that hallway, by the way. Oh, was there? I yeah. thought it was just an end. Oh, no. The camera hides things from time to time, but, like, hallways are generally pretty fucking... It, the camera will never stop on a wall unless it's clearly a wall. Okay. Like, it'll show you the path first, and then it'll be like, okay, now the camera's part of the wall. Hmm. Usually, it's... I can't really think of any room that, like... Yeah, so... The most iconic... It's a window. Yep. You ready to see the most iconic scene of Resident Evil history and how horror history for oh, video man. games? The turn. And I tell you, zombie movies, fucking games, including Run Resident away. Evil itself, you missed the door. Because uh, you're, you're, you're packing a pistol. Barry Burton's packing a fucking magnum. That's fair. Get a close look at his gun. It's a fucking revolver. Barry! Look out, it's a monster! Look out, I'm on there. Oh, I'm coming for you. Bam! See, it's it's weird. In the cutscene, it's not like the super magnum, but if he's actually used, if you actually had his magnum... Yeah? It one-shots, like, everything. Oh. Like, three shots bosses. And, like, the regular Magnum is not as strong as Barry Burton's famous fucking Magnum. Oh. It is the Barry Burton special. That and his ferocious headbutt, but that didn't debut until Res the Resident Evil 5 Mercenaries. Better go check on Wesker, make sure he's okay. But, he uh, makes it out fine. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure he does. Absolutely, you're right. So I'll give you some advice. There's lots of places to look. And lots of things to do, and a lot of like critical path to look through. But number one, rule number one, don't open the front door. Because you see your... Oh, oh, that door down there? Yeah. 
Don't open this door. Don't open it. Don't even fucking don't look at it. Don't touch it. It doesn't even exist. Why? Because you see, your character, your your player character, Jill Valentine there, yeah. is fucking retarded and will do what you tell her to do. Okay. And she'll open the door. What? Where do I go? Well, there's like eight. This is a multi-tiered building. Look how many fucking doors there are. Pick one. Pick. Well, why can't? Why not the front door? Because that goes outside. What's wrong with outside? What did you leave outside? Death. Yes. How many dogs was that again? But so they're still out there. Of course they are. Oh. Better finish searching. I'm assuming he think he just wants you to search the upstairs and shit and just wa- kind of wander around and then you come back downstairs and he'd be like, I can't find Wesker. And to my response, I'd be like, Barry, you stayed on the first floor and like stared at a door. What? You didn't even look. <laughs> Barry. Barry, please. Oh, Why God. do you like this guy then? I don't understand. Because he... You know, I'm going to take some time after this video and then we'll come back on the next episode of <laughs> of this game. After showing him every single gold line Barry has from the original All right, I'll search the fucking hall. Yeah, let's go talk to Barry. Don't worry, Barry, Barry is on the level. He's not suspicious or dangerous Yeah, he's on the first fucking level. Barry. No, nothing. I, nothing. Can't, I can't remember if this version has the gold line of you are the master of unlocking. Your team is dropping like flies. You gotta do something about this. Yeah. He's really just stuck on that dining room. He's just gonna go right back to that blood pile and be like, hmm. Mm. Tomato juice. <laughs> oh, here it is. The most important item in your fucking repertoire, a lockpick. You'd make better use of it. Got the lockpick does not take up an inventory slot. And that's the important part. Neat. You have a new I know why my steam inventory! Oh no! I bet it's a card. Something happens. Meet up in this hall. Yeah. Alright. Remember that. This hall's important. It's kinda like This is your hub. Now, there's lots of things about Resident Evil, especially this one that's super iconic, but it's basically kinda carried over to all the other games. Yeah. Uh this was the door I went through the first that's time. That's the dining hall, that's where Barry is. If you go there, he's going to be looking at that blood, just going... And there's a typewriter in that room. Yes. That's all I want to confirm. That's the room with the typewriter in it. Yes. So, save, there's safe rooms. And you've not played Nolder Resident Evil, so you may not be as aware about how a safe room works. Yeah. A, every safe room in the classic Resident Evils have the most beautiful music. The baby's first puzzle. Portrait hangs on the wall. It's almost like it's watching you. Indeed. I don't... Sh- how do I knife? You don't. You equip it like a weapon. It takes some inventory space. Who the fuck? The knife is an uh, as a non-option. You are given the knife out as a fucking courtesy. Decorate the wall. I'm gonna I, I gotta quote and I'm gonna I might get flack for this. I might not get flack for this. I'm gonna quote Rick and Morty on this one. Okay. How is this fair? How is the knife fair? It's not. You have no rights. We only keep it around because it's fun. Because it's funny. <laughs> Stabs! Ah. Stabbing times, yeah! Um, okay. Yeah, your basic enemy is going to take about, like, 12 to 18 knife stabs to get him down. Oh, that's not good. You have it when you fuck up. That is the, I have abused this game's combat, and I have, I have fucked up. An eerie picture of this match. Okay, now this is this is genius, because this game introduces some a lot of new mechanics that weren't in the original. Such as defensive items. Will you take the dagger? It's a defensive dagger. Fucking yeah. Always have one equipped. Because you really, you just don't want to get grabbed by the ghoulies, you know? Yeah. And also, this is a brilliant piece of tutorial right here. So, the game has introduced a new mechanic that was not in the original. And it's going to show you how the fuck to use it. So let's see how smart you are with ammo conservation. Because this game, there is not enough ammo in this game to kill every enemy. Oh. Uh. Straight up. But, defensive item. And, and, run? You, and Yeah, no, you can just... And then you should be able to just hop over the the guard there. Ah! See, this is actually... That's actually one thing where the tank controls are very advantageous for. Yeah. Is that when you change screens like that, you're still facing the same direction. So, he's gonna come over? Can I just sit here and... You can just sit him? there. He can't get you. Okay. So, he's, he's basically uh, incapacitated for the time being. That's adorable. That's a door. Yes, there's also something sparkling. I know, but I don't know how to get it. I thought that might be the reward from the puzzle. Uh, the puzzle is getting up there to get it. You definitely want to grab it, though. 
woman drawing water. Couple, there's an easy way to do this, but you're gonna have to expend some ammo. Oh, I have to kill him. You have to take him down. So just like that. Yep. Just like this. Yep. Straight up. Just count your kind of not count your shots. Just just make sure you don't overshoot. Two. All right, he's down. First kills are special. Five. Remember, he oh, also this moves. Exactly. Figuring it out. Also, keep in mind that took five shots, right? Yeah. He also knifed him in the head once. That is a pitiful fucking exchange, right? No, this game is... Can I pick up my knife? Nope. That's stupid. It's used. It's embedded into his skull. That's stupid. Give me the knife. No. Give me the knife. No. No knife. That's an important item. You're going gonna to want that. That's going to make your life infinitely easier. And I'm going to give you again... I'll help you out with these early game strats because... There's I'm... map of the mansion F1F. That's important. The map. Yes, you want that it, because oh it marks... god, now I'm playing Luigi's Mansion. I'll have been here. A little bit. Um. Okay, so I'll give you one hundred percent items. In yeah. progress. Yeah. So and there's uh, there's me. I'm the little red fucking thing. Yep. And yeah. So every any room that's red, that means there's still an item in it somewhere that you can get somehow. Doesn't necessarily mean I could do it right now. Exactly. It gotcha. could mean that like like for example, I'll give you one that I know of off the top of my head in the dining hall. There's a statue on the second floor you can push down to the first, huh. which gives you an item. There's also a puzzle that you don't get an access in that room until much later on, because you need a special key to do it. I so there's see. shit like that. So, like, if you're done with the room, though, it's green, and that means you don't have to worry about that room anymore. And I'll give you a freebie before we go, because it's we're getting we're getting to be that time right now. Oh, no. Yeah. You're going to want to push that, amp, that little uh, that fucking shelf. You're going to push that back where it was. Oh, that's a good idea, actually. Yeah, because, um... No, don't get on it. Dance. No. Yep, yep. Dance for me now that you've failed me. Yep. So, I I kind of want it to be a surprise, but I feel like it's not... I feel like you already kind of know about it, because it, it's such a big... It was such a big deal when this game came out that people talked about it quite a bit, and I figure, like, I should give you the warning, because... Okay. When you kill a zombie in this version of Resident Evil... Yeah. They can come back. Sometimes? Sometimes takes a long time, but they might get back up later. And they're faster and meaner. Alright. And they usually take more hits. It's locked! An emblem of a sword. Oh no. So yeah. The only way to make sure a zombie never gets back up again is to either A, remove its head, or set the fucker on fire. Interesting. And there's means of doing that. When we get to that point, we'll, uh, we'll get there. But in the meantime, I'm gonna just ask everyone to like, comment, and subscribe for more backwater horror. Dang.